Multimedia Definitions Multimedia can be defined as the ability to handle combinations of media having fundamentally different properties. Examples of these are text and video or graphics, audio and video. It also involves with still and moving images, animation, audio and media. Multi, many, much, multiple. Medium, a substance regarded as the means of transmission of a force or effect. A channel or system of communication, information and entertainment. So what is multimedia? The terms multi and medium don't seem to fit well. Term medium needs more clarification. Medium means for distribution and presentation of information. Classification based on perception. Text, audio, video is appropriate for defining multimedia. A more rigorous definition is required so that multimedia services can be specified. Every type of information represented, stored, transmitted and processed digitally. In this subclass, the individual media types are defined, followed by the multimedia objects which result from combination of these media types. Examples Text, Graphic Drawings and Images Computer-based multimedia They are interactive User determines what content is delivered, when it is delivered, and how. Non-linear, two or more media. Computer multimedia, multi-sensory experience in real world. Multi-sensory memory imprints, different learning styles benefits. Hypertext, links. Hypermedia, hypermedia where. Hypertext in Multimedia Hypertext is a text which has links. The particular links connects to other texts. The term was first coined by Ted Nelson around 1965. Hypertext is therefore usually non-linear. Hypermedia Hypermedia is not constrained to be text-based. It can include other media also. Graphics Images and continuous media, sound and video are the examples of hypermedia. Ted Nelson was the first to use this term. The World Wide Web, WWW, is the best hypermedia application. Hypermedia application, an extension to hypertext, that supports links, graphics, sound and video elements. The World Wide Web is a partial hypermedia systems since it supports graphical hyperlinks new hypermedia systems allow objects in computer videos to hyperlinks applications multimedia can be used in classrooms or workplaces as trained tools it allows the trainer to provide high quality the students can hear and see the subjects they are learning and bring it to life through technology advantages Multimedia is any media or contents of combination of content forms. Advantages of multimedia is the ability to reduce training costs, increases learning effectiveness. Most users of multimedia consider how simple it is to use and more than other learning methods of the past. It is integrated and interactive. All different media are integrated digitization process. Interactivity is heightened by the possibility of easy feedback. It can be used for wide variety of audiences ranging from one person to a whole group. It is very user friendly. It doesn't take much energy out of the user. You can sit and watch the presentation. You can read the text and hear the audio. It is multi-sensory. It uses a lot of user senses while making use of multimedia. Example, hearing, see, and talking. Disadvantages. Information is overloaded. 
because it is so easy to use. It can contain too much information at once. It takes time to compile. It can be expensive. Multimedia can cost us a large amount of money. Too much makes it unpractical. Large files like video and audio has an effect on the time taken for your presentation to load. To use a large computer to store the files. In case you want to upload it onto the internet, you need a larger computer to store the files. Example, bandwidth and the user's abilities. Need for design. A business that is successful without a good design would still be more successful with a good design. Strategy. Design is an investment in innovative thinking, positioning, branding and communication that creates value for businesses. In terms of competitive advantage, customer trust and loyalty and market share. Transparency. Design can strengthen democracy by building trust in the communication between government and the governed. Trust emerges from understanding. Design is a critical intermediary in making the complex, clear and enhancing understanding. Human Factors Human Factors and Ergonomics is a multidisciplinary field. It incorporates contributions like psychology, engineering, biomechanics, mechanobiology, industrial design, physiology and anthropometry. It is the study of designing equipment and devices. It fits the human body and its cognitive abilities. Human factor is the discipline of optimizing human performance in the workplace. It is the interaction between people and environment, people and procedures, people and machines, people and people. Human factor and ergonomics Human factor and ergonomics are employed to fulfill the goals of occupational health and safety. It is also enhance productivity. They are relevant in the design of such things as safe furniture, easy to use interfaces to machines and equipment. Ergonomics Ergonomics is the scientific discipline and it is concerned with the understanding of interactions and other elements of a system. The profession applies theory, principles and methods to design. It is done to optimize human well-being and overall system performance. Application of Ergonomics Proper ergonomics is basically a design and it is necessary to prevent repetitive strain injuries and also aids to cure other musculoskeletal disorders. If those disorders are not treated, it can develop over time and can lead to long-term disability. Fundamentals of Ergonomics It deals with fundamentals of human behavior and the survey is intended to basic principles of cognitive and socio-psychology. Fundamentals of Ergonomics is also relevant to the design and use of information systems. Advantages of Ergonomics Ergonomics deals with the fit between the user equipment and their environments. It takes account of the user's capabilities and it has limitations in seeking and to ensure that tasks, functions and information. The environment suits each user and it needs to access fit between person and the used technology. Human factor specialists consider the job being done and the demands on user. The equipment used, its size, shape and it is for the task and the information used. It can be presented, accessed and changed. Disadvantages of Ergonomics It focuses on important findings and it happens in psychological science. The benefits arise out of implications for the design and use of information systems are utilized properly. Basics of Human Perception The topics include the basics of human perception and it ranges from memory capacity and organization. The development of skill, expertise, the characteristics of everyday reasoning, 
and decision making are associated areas concepts and principles of human perception perception is the process thought which the various sensations are interpreted and organized into meaningful patterns human perception involves becoming aware of objects qualities or relations by the way of the sense organs problems in information central problem in information science is processed in a way to deal with how to label information stored for later recall by examining how human memory operates and can gain some insight into possible schemes feedback this survey reveals many aspects of human mind and to know about the human mind offers ideas to exploit mental capacities and it is designing the use of information systems human skill level and behavior competencies selected to help support and drive strategic goals it will be aimed at the performance management and employee development programs it is important to provide tailored measures of these competencies from a motivational point of view it is critical to communicate to employee the key performance expectations are need to inform to employee and provide actionable feedback regarding their performance related to competencies concepts of human behavior human life is a continuous process and culture ethic gender identity helps us to understand people people play active part in creating their experiences and every human being is different yet the same human skill level and behavior to do this objective and observable measures and develop each job family we call these measures key behaviors and various levels of jobs within a job family key behaviors developed with jobs in each job zone and naturally one would expect to find differences it is in skill development knowledge and abilities and also contrast in lower level key behavior the purpose of key behaviors is to tailor the competencies to the job family key behaviors are observable measurable and can be written as succinctly possible and also drive the successful performance of the competency human skill level and behavior skills abilities and knowledge requirements in the behaviors from one zone to the next the difference occurs in many instances the same behavior was used for more than one zone it is done by adjusting magnitude frequency level and so forth from one zone to the next in some instances different behaviors that measure and reflect distinct skill used to one zone from the next when using different behaviors the behaviors used for higher job zones truly reflect enhanced levels of skill it also reveals knowledge it is higher than the behaviors used to describe lower zone job requirements and expectations to develop appropriate and meaningful key behaviors job experts from all four campuses dialogues and task spoken language dialogue is a comfortable form of communication it happens between humans and computers and this is present in a growing number of commercial systems for each task which can be comfortably performed in spoken language dialogue with the computer there is an equivalence class of tasks they can be performed using similar dialogue management technology each task class has a number of minimum functional requirements met by the technology it will enable comfortable spoken language human computer dialogue applying dialogue principles suitability for the task learning individualization and conformity with user expectations dialogue principles is a self descriptiveness controllability and error tolerance example of dialogue here is an example for dialogue i need to travel in may 
and what day in May you want to travel. Okay, I need to be there from the 12th to the 15th. And you are flying to what city? Pune. And what time would you like to leave Nagpur? Hmm, I don't think there is many options for non-stop. Yes, there is three no-stop today. What are they? Dialogues and task. A framework for dialogue and deliberation. Dialogue is to inform the issue and dialogue to identify and evaluate choices. Determine consensus and reach a decision and craft a motion. Deliberate and vote. Requirements for dialogue and task. The following are the requirements in terms of dialogue elements. They are initiative, system feedback, predictions and system focus, dialogue history, user models, and meta communication. Three complex task class or dialogue type pairs are distinguished. Their corresponding minimum dialogue elements are presented. They are illustrated from own development of spoken languages. The result is a first version of task-oriented dialogue theory. It may support the design and specification of sophisticated spoken language dialogue systems. Many people follow different styles of dialogue system and techniques. They differ in learning styles and techniques. No right mix. Task. These nouns denote a piece of work that one must do. A task is a well-defined responsibility that is usually imposed by another and that may be burdensome. Learning domains. Cognitive domain learning includes all intellectual behaviors and requires thinking. Affect domain learning deals with expression of feelings and acceptance of attitudes opinions or values. Psychomotor domain learning involves acquiring skills that require integration of mental and muscular activity. Learning and learning modes. Humans basically are lifelong learners and because the brain is only body part which grows till the end of life. Since from birth, humans learn a lot and that is considerable learning and writing research and done a pioneering work in education. If you observe learning pattern in science and math and learning in the geosciences, it will be fun. It is like all learning may be categorized into domains and the concept knowledge is the basic domain. The learning of any new subject needs special skills and can concentrate and read the science matter. Deciphering the message and assimilating, it will be challenging and special skill called visualization leads the matter here and embark on learning. Visual learner learns best by seeing. Auditory learner learns best by hearing. Kinesthetic learner learns beat by feeling or experiencing. Cognitive domain Cognitive domain includes content knowledge and it also leads the way for development of intellectual skills. But core areas of cognition, speech, auditory, memory and visual processing differ greatly and their velocity differs a lot from person to person. Cognition includes the recalling ability of reading and it also involves in recognizing the particular message. It revolves on specific facts and also applies to any kind of subject or concepts. And it serves as developing intellectual abilities and skills. There are six major categories and they start from simplest behavior. In other words, it is about recalling facts. The matter should get deciphered from the most complex part and it is nothing but the evaluation of particular matter. Many researches were done in cognitive areas and it deals with gamut of education matters. The matter continues to presenting the complex matter in simple format and the studies conducted in the taxonomy of educational objectives. 
affective and psychomotor learning domain affective learning domain this domain explains with attitudes motivation willingness to participate and it also details out valuing what is being learned and ultimately incorporating the values of a discipline into a way of life following stages in this domain are not as in order as the cognitive domain but it has been described as the following receiving willing to listen responding willing to participate valuing willing to be involved organizing willing to be an advocate characterization willing to change one's behavior lifestyle or way of life necessarily anticipate our math students to become math instructors show up for class participate in class and become involved with the content students do expend effort in their courses sustain the effort throughout the duration of the course the affective domain is not handled properly with just text on a screen class meetings or an initial class meeting to support an online course might be used for affective development and videos and audio clips are also excellent ways to engage the affective domain former students giving tips on how to be successful and the instructor informing the students of the value of the course professionals who are using the knowledge from the course in their lives an overview of the program with the key support personnel and facilities visible to the students streaming audio files throughout the course encouraging students and providing helpful tips and short video clips of the instructor explaining course content psychomotor learning domain the psychomotor domain deals with performing sequences of motor activities and it is done to a specified level of accuracy smoothness rapidity or force we find psychomotor learning in content including the following lab courses for science classes vocational courses physical education courses training in using specified equipment such as computers cameras musical instruments etc performing arts the psychomotor domain deals with performing sequences of motor activities it is done to a specified level of accuracy smoothness rapidity or force underlying the motor activity is cognitive understanding the stages of the psychomotor domain have been described as follows action elementary movements coordination synchronized movement formation bodily movements production combined verbal and non verbal movement imitation manipulation precision the psychomotor domain is well assessed in a face to face condition and there is a cognitive component underlying motor skills and these can be effectively viewed in videos demonstrations online text descriptions or with pictures of each step in the sequence simulations shall be used to help people learn the steps or practice variations of a motor sequence and perform the skill with an instructor or designee judging if the skill was performed to a set standard hands on opportunities because the psychomotor activity is dangerous or equipment is not readily available and benefit more from hands on learning than from mediated learning within the psychomotor domain as students become more expert videos and pictures can be used to teach the skill multimedia educational software it is widely recognized as non functional requirements nfrs and they are crucial in software development different architectural choices have a substantial impact on the quality it can also affect the services provided by the resulting system and the architectural choices should be chosen based on the subject we focus on analysis reasoning and the process of building a value model it particularly aims at a software system and it explicitly represents the nfrs 
it is represented here as an application and demonstrator. Often expressed in an application from the domain and the multimedia educational software systems represent a broad class of software systems. It is performed with complex characteristics and the complex features are difficult to follow. They tend to make evaluation difficult. The educational potential of multimedia both as learning and teaching too. It is widely acknowledged. Its various initiatives are highly encouraging. The educational multimedia becomes an important tool in education. It is widely used in school practices. Issues in Multimedia Educational Softwares This section describes the context of the problem and the coming sessions identifies the features of the software domain. It will point out the needs in evaluating multimedia educational softwares. The evaluation criteria were developed for multimedia educational softwares. They are having the basic fundamentals of issues. It is done according to the framework of ERMES. The ERMES stands for European Multimedia Educational Software Network, Annotation Scheme for Representing NFRs. It introduces the selected scheme for NFR representation. This is a process-oriented as opposed to a product-oriented representation. The conclusions identify further research issues. It builds links between NFRs and architectures. Quality system. A quality system sets out the standards. You are working to those particular systems. It will help how you are going to meet them. The fundamentals of a quality system will be the same. It will be regardless of what your work. The system should define some of the vital areas. It begins with what kind of people are the audience. It also deals with the actions and documents that are going to be employed. It should also ensure the work in a consistent manner. Emphasize evidence of what has happened. It may include manuals and handbooks. It should also have procedures, policies, records and templates. The terminology used is less important. It should have the purpose and use of the documents. The same principles can be applied in any area. You can use it in an academic research laboratory. It can be applied on a medical device manufacturer. Sometimes it is also used in a hospital, clinical trial units. Understanding, interpreting and implementing a quality system. The aim of this quality system workbook is to provide tools. It is a practical approach to develop a quality system that works for the user. The workbook concentrates on the core. It covers underlying principles of quality which are pivotal. They are explicitly or implicitly expressed. Elements of user interface You need to be consistent in designing your interface. It should be predictable. It needs to amount your choice of interface elements. They are aware of it or not. Users have become familiar with elements. Because they act in a certain way. When appropriate, you need to choose to adopt those elements. This will help with the task completion. It will aid in achieving efficiency and satisfaction. Input controls Check boxes Radio buttons Drop down lists List boxes Buttons Toggles Text fields and Date field Navigational components Breadcrumb Slider Search field Pagination Tags and Icons Informational devices Tool tips Icons Progress bar Notifications Message boxes Model windows Containers